Hi all, welcome to AOP Tech on YouTube. Uh, and I wanted to share with you today as we've been getting some questions from teachers about how to put a video into a Google form. That's a great way to be able to give students some video instruction uh, from something that you find online, like from YouTube, um, but also have some follow up so you know that they are watching and engaging with that content. So let's jump in. I have a Google form that I've set up here and I've, I've done very little other than to name it. Uh, and we'll, we're gonna insert a YouTube video in a moment. Now, if you have content that you've created via a screencast like I'm doing now, um, you have kind of two options to start. You can either use YouTube as a conduit if you have that as a private video, you can get the share link and use it that way. Or if you're using Google Classroom, you could post the video um, and directly from your drive and then the Google form to that assignment as well. Both of those are both uh, easy ways to do that attaching there. But I'm gonna presume that I'm gonna use a video that I found on YouTube. So I have this brain pop video that is about hand washing. Uh, very apropos for the moment, and I want to use that to ask the students some questions. So I can either, on that video, since I've already found it because I wanted to preview it first, I could select the share button and get the link and hold on to that link for a moment. Or in the form, I can directly search for YouTube. So if I look at the floating window at the right-hand side here, one of those options is add a video. It looks like a little YouTube symbol because it is. So I could search for it. So I'm gonna type in hand washing hands. And this was from Brain Pop Junior. It's a great video. So I can click and select it. Or I could, if I wanted to, since I had the URL, put it in directly uh, there. So you can kind of go either way in order to insert that. So here I am, it pulls up the one I want, and I'm gonna hit select. And you can see that I have this video, hands, washing hands. And maybe I want that to be first. You can see that that defaulted to the second piece there. There's an entitled question. All I have to do is grab those six little dots and drag up, or I can drag the other piece down there. So now I I'm ready to be able to ask my questions. So I might ask my first multiple choice question as how long should we wash our hands for? And you can see Google tried to start um, anticipating the type question type that I needed there, but ultimately we got back to that multiple choice. If not, I could drop down this menu and manually change it. 20 seconds, 30 seconds, five minutes. You get the idea there. I am going to make sure that this is required because I want to make sure that students answer. It might be turned off by default. You could turn it on. So you have that there. And you would continue working through your form to create uh, or to add in more questions. So I might add in another question that's a short answer that says, describe how to wash your hands properly. If you needed to, you could put use those three little snowman dots in the bottom corner of that question to add in a description. If you wanted to give students additional information, clarifying information, directions, etc., And you would work through your form to give as many questions as you'd like or need to. At the end, let's take a look at some settings before we think about how we are sharing this. So up at the very top, if I needed to customize or wanted to customize the theme or color, I could do that. The I is a preview button. I'm gonna jump into settings for two specific things. So one, uh, you want to make sure that under your general settings, you want to see here if, what your settings currently are. So right now for me, this would restrict it to users within my uh, domain. 
Um, that could be great. If students are working on home devices, it means they're going to have to sign into their school Google account. If there's a concern that either students don't know how to do that on their home device, their passwords, um, or they're a younger student who maybe doesn't have their G Suite accounts yet for your school, you would want to unselect that if it's selected. So you wouldn't want to require a sign in for that. If you're not requiring sign in, make sure that, and I should have done this immediately, and I'm going to hit save right here, that somewhere on this forum you have a question that says name. Uh, that's usually a best practice. Sometimes I put that first. Uh, you can make it student initials, student ID if there is a concern about um, identifying them, whatever you need to to do that there. So now I've gone back and done that because I want to make sure, aha, that I have. You Really, I should have done that first. The other piece that you might want to consider uh, especially if this is something that's in the routine for students anyway, you could make this a quiz. I could turn this on to make this a quiz where um, Google would automatically mark my objective questions and I could set some parameters on a short answer question. Uh, it's really good for one word kind of phrases uh, and multiple choice, true or false. Longer responses you would need to look at and give the point values to. Um, if you would like videos on how to turn on Google Forms quizzes and how those settings all work, you could check out our YouTube channel. Uh, so I could do that as well. So those are our big key components there. We're gonna wanna put our video in either by using the share link or searching directly on YouTube after selecting this add video uh, button on the right hand side. We're going to add in our questions uh, we're going to make sure that we put a name or identifying information on that quiz as well. It's always a good practice. And then we're going to look at our settings to make sure anything that requires sign-in, whether we want that or not, and the ability to make it a an objective quiz there. And we will set all of those things. So once you have that, um, you have a few options here. You're going to use the send button up at the top to get information to be able to send that out or share that out. Uh, you can send it directly via email if you're not using Google Classroom. That might be an option, though that's not typically what we wind up doing a lot. If you're comfortable with HTML and you have a Google site for your teacher site, it's very easy to embed that HTML into something like a Weebly uh, teacher web page or a Google site um, on there. But again, most people aren't using that one on a daily basis. The most common is to use that via the link. Um, I can shorten that link. I can put that link into Google Classroom or start in Google Classroom if I already have this made and pull it from my drive. Either way, uh, that's the nice thing about using G Suite is that there's kind of multiple ways to accomplish the same task. But I'm going to take that link. If, if I didn't have Google Classroom, maybe I'm a, a first or second grade teacher and I don't have Google Classroom right now, uh, and that's okay. Uh, we don't wanna throw too many things in the time of distance learning. Uh, if that's brand new to students, we don't wanna overwhelm them and try and get them all on the same page at the same time. We wanna give them things that are very straightforward and familiar to them. So uh, I could send out that link through whatever messaging that I use uh, for for my parents in, of the students in my class. So whether that link is posted on your teacher website, whether you use your student information system to send out email blasts, whether you have uh, a contact group, that link can go in there and students would be able then to access, watch that video and answer the questions. So that's a great way to send some instruction to students and have them uh, see some quality content that you have chosen for them, or in some cases, maybe even made for them, uh, and then give them some formative assessment on it so you can see their understanding and know that they've, they've engaged with that content. A great way to just diversify the different kinds of assessment and practice that you provide for students. As always, 
You can follow AOP Tech by subscribing right here on YouTube and follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram for all things Google, G Suite, and e-learning and ed tech. I'll see you soon.